And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to APAC North. It's our third matchup, which means it's the match of the day. It's that one, Kia versus Talon. And I'm so excited to see this Korea versus Korea matchup. Welcome back. I'm Austin Medic, your host for the show. With me are Jess and Fresh here on the desk. How about then we have a chat about these two teams and what they have to show, starting off with, I guess, the easy one, Damwon Kia. Jess, this squad has smashed through everybody in stage two. They went November major, or sorry, November major is always on my other way to the major oh, in you're Mexico. The already, oh. already in the November major, people. I just, well, they went to Mexico, they played well, they only lost to Liquid, which, you know what, fair enough in that case. Is this gonna be another day at the office for them and for Rin really today against Talon? Rin? Chico of APAC, the Rin of APAC, whatever you want to name him, been absolutely smashing the competition. I did sort of allude to it in the pre-show, saying that Rin had had the team shift around their play style rather than the other way around, which was causing a bit of friction. Remember back to Villa, Red Stairs hold that Rin is very, very known for. Unfortunately, the team was trying to play very passive. Rin was trying to play aggressive. Two cl play styles clashing together. Now, they just fly around Rin and everything works to yep. great success. So that's great. However, I've got to give a bit of a shout out to Rin, who is a, a ping pong master. I was uh, in there a couple of times on the ping pong table in Mexico and he's, he's good. He's good. I, uh, I, w I think he's not just good on Zofia, he's good at ping pong. So that is, what do you call it? Table tennis. Sorry, yeah. table tennis. <laughs> I got the Korea, correct. Japan, China and Russia are incredible at table tennis. If you mm -hmm. ever want to really watch the top. Shaiko the was good too, I heard. I didn't never watch him Game of reflexes. Yeah. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I do think for Damwon Kia specifically, you and I have spoken about their map pool being a problem for them internationally and in best of threes. They got through the APAC playoffs though, so they clearly are good enough at certain maps in multiple multiplicity of maps rather. But I don't think when it comes to big teams, LATAM, et cetera, they really have the gusto that it takes. So today in a best of one, they'll probably get their way. Well, how about then their opponent's Talon? They're up against the wall in this one. It's a tough first game. Up against the wall, two new players as well, and you, you're wondering about them, how they'll settle in, they're coherent, and whether they'll create the opportunities that are there to be exploited by Dan One. If they make the least mistakes possible, I think they'll be fine, but they are up on an uphill battle. It's a difficult one. I think the map is going to be very important in this case. Maybe something to here, use. Yeah. yeah. Let's put up the map bands and the veto up on the screen for everybody to see. And let's see which map we'll actually go to in this best of one series. Damon Kia couldn't get a hold of the best of threes <laughs> that we had in Mexico. We're no. going to go to Clubhouse. <laughs> Damon Kia removing bank our newest map added into the pool with consulate removed. Clubhouse, what does this mean, Fresh? You, you, honestly, this is... Is this something that Talon can actually uh, use to their advantage? I'm not so sure. I mean, the, they played each other on this map in the last stage and obviously Damwon Kia won. So, and, and we were speaking about how Rin particularly loves this map. I mean, no. you know, Rin is kind of the central yep. figure in this team. Um, so all of the signs, particularly from the map ban, are kind of pointing towards it being the map ban phase having been won by Damwon. We say that though. But Korean finals, best of five. Of course, Clubhouse is in the mix because Has it's down one Kia naturally. Yep. And Talon's like, you know what? We don't mind. Throw it in the mix. It goes max OT and Talon win it by one round. That was the last time these two teams played. It's How also long long. Was that? This was on July the 18th. So that's like... Just before the major? Just, just before the major and just before, like a couple days before the end of the stage. Correct, correct. Yep. So that was their sort of last opportunity to sort of get this kind of head-to-head -head in their region going. That was in the finals there. And I mean, Talon managed to beat Damwon Kia, albeit I'm going to throw a little bit of an asterisk under me saying that so the audience doesn't get a little bit confused. There is not a chance Damwon Kia cared more about their strategies in the Korean finals than they did about saving their strategies for the major, which was way more important. So I am going to, I'm going to backtrack a little bit there. How do Hedy and Demic fit into this today against uh, that one? Key? Hopefully they bring experience and they minimize the mistakes that Talon make. And hopefully they then kind of use their experience. As we said, they've been across multiple rosters. They're experienced in the region. Mm -hmm. And they can identify opportunities for Talon to exploit. There was sixth last stage. So, I mean, with how 
T1 is seemingly performing already. We've seen them play already. They are probably likely staying in that bottom-ish spot. Mantis is looking to get better, so they can't really hide behind that anymore. Talon is in serious danger of being yep. bottom mm. two around T1, which is the danger zone already for them, considering where they've placed throughout this season. So for me, they do have to win more than the two games and that one overtime win that they had last stage. And if they do that, things might look a little bit better for them. I, I just, I'm really putting a lot of my money on Hetty. I know oh, okay. I, this is going to be the worst pile I'm going to pull out today, but you guys know I do this every day. He's got, he's got the smartest heady on him in the team, and uh, that was a bad one, wasn't Let's it? Let's go to the heady to heady. In the <laughs> <laughs> See, we that don't one have got a heady to heady on, on this, but he is the, the brains of the team um, outside of, of course, uh, their, their coaching staff. Uh, but he is the one that I'm hoping will bring the shot calling that they need mid and late round where Talon struggle. What do Talon need to, to do here to ban on their side on club here to see maybe they can actually punch up to Damwon Kia and prevent, again, you'll have to pardon me for this one. Oh, go ahead. Headies from rolling. Oh, why? You don't have to three up me, bro. It's, it's quickly, oh, quickly. Our lobby's ready. Let's, Let's go. go. What do you think? Uh, they play a lot of Valkyrie. They also play a lot of Flores, Habana, and Mavericks. They love their hard breach. Get rid of one. Yeah. That's cool, Get rid of a hard breach. Yeah. All right, makes sense. So, Fresh Jess, thank you very much. It's Damwon Kia versus Talon. It's our match of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how Damwon Kia perform now back online in APAC North versus what they did in the playoffs of the Mexico Major. We've got Happen M to take us through it on Clubhouse. Enjoy. Thank you, Milosh. And this time, M is already here. Doesn't need to be brought up uh, through yeah. the screen. So, uh, welcome, welcome giant. back, giant Emmy. Um, so powerful. <laughs> this game is maybe a little bit more important as well, because actually, Damon Gaming Kia is currently in fifth place. That means that they are just on the safe edge, because the bottom three get relegated inside of ABAC, and that means that, well, if Talon takes some three points here, that puts them up to 20, moves them into sixth place, and then they're up into striking distance for Damon Kia. So, it's uh, a very important game for the two of these. Damon Kia, of course, wants to get themselves out of that relegation danger, whereas Talon is fighting for survival. Hello, there's Kanos. What? In there? Or is that just on my feed? I didn't see it. I think it was just in your feed. Oh, I'm sorry. I did have a little Canos in the corner. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I thought it was great. Um, that's just on my feed, though. Um, yeah, okay. A point raised. Ban heart destruction. Yes. Good. Great idea. Um, it's Let's club. Throw it out of the it's a hard destruction then. driven map. It's had a couple of little changes and tweaks. And as they show up and as they rear their fun face into the game and as the game gets into a little bit of depth we'll be able to draw your attention most of it was decluttering most of it was you know cleaning up the space making things a little bit cleaner for some not the most common fights obviously bar and bar is probably the biggest major change it's not gonna be confusing at all they planted in bar <laughs> which <No>. bar <laughs> they planted in bar it's a lot of bars we need to, we call we need to have names for the bar can we do like a petition to name the bars? I don't know if they have actual you want names. To just get like a free submission for anybody that's watching to name the new bars, so they're not called bar and bar. Name the just new thought bars. we would call them bar, bar and bar. stage because one is the bar and the other one is with the stage. No, I I want an actual name for the okay. bar. You know, we've got blue and sunrise. We can do that. Maybe we name it medics and easy. No, that's <laughs> too confusing. Um, we'll think about it. Um. Okay, that's probably one of the most major changes you'll see as a rotation comes through. CCTV and cash, if we're going to quickly look at some of the changes that were here, probably the most notable is that what was a double two thin walls between construction and cash is now one big single soft wall. So it's a little bit of a difference in terms of resources. It's also a little bit tougher to open along the top now. Um, you sort of have to get both sides if you want to be able to swing explosives through on the top. It has gotten a little bit tighter. I think on the yeah. top there, as it's highlighted, so, it's now a single wall. As you said, and, and at first I was like, all right, nice, that saves you a reinforcement you can use elsewhere, but there's a lot of teams that actually like to keep one of those walls open to so create a line of sight all the way down into the uh, bedroom, making it hard for them uh, to swing through that door. Now, that's no longer possible. You either need to keep the complete wall soft, or you need to reinforce it. And I believe that Talon is deciding to reinforce it. Yes, it has been reinforced from the other side. 
Forced to make it a bit harder to get grenades in from uh, the side of Demon Kia from uh, from the construction side of things. So, the extra reinforcement question is always where would it be used? We have four currently in the garage. We have one on top of the rafters. Then we have two on the main wall. One, of course, uh, I already lost track. We're on like five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So there, there's still no. They use them all. I, do, I just don't know where I went. I can't count. Oh, Alright, counting count. is yes, never mind. tricky. It, it is definitely tricky, especially now I do not need to do analysis anymore. You just lose all the mathematical skills that yeah. you once had. I never had them. Oh, look I at never this. had them. So here, the top and the bottom to try and yep. pop the entirety of the wall. There's nothing to directly counter this too much. Obviously, these grenades and this damage is going to be used to try and get rid of it. But there's no catch there. The claws of Damic there in hand. He was in a position to try and throw them and long arm them, but with the pacing, with the destruction that was otherwise going to come through, it wasn't quite able to make things connect. They've done step one. Step one is always done. Step one is, for most of these teams at this level, inevitability. It doesn't really matter who you're up against. It becomes tougher to then try and dig your way into the next bit taking the real estate to make step one worthwhile. And the way that they open up this wall makes me think that they might not actually be looking for a CCTV plant because that, you know, it, it looks like they're cutting off a rotation rather than opening up the angle towards the side of the rafters. I could be wrong, however. Often uh, a lot of teams are very careful on where they exactly place these extra thermics or where they make use of their hard breach abilities. This Woogie Man is just uh, opening up with that blowtorch, trying to create some angles. It's Demic that is receiving a little bit of pressure here. He hears everything open up. The magnets are being tossed out as well to protect him a little bit more from the plateau. This Cat Sang is trying to dig him in from, uh, dig himself in from below. So, still two roamers active though. And that means that there's not no, too much pressure coming down on the site yet. C4 to the door doesn't quite catch them. A fishing trick that we've seen actually catch a surprising amount of fish. It's something where you wouldn't expect it to be so consistently set up, but if you hear the damage coming from underneath, you're generally aware that a swing is going to come otherwise around the same time. Canos on the slow creep towards Lounge. He's not quite sure if he's as confident and comfortable pushing that, but Tamek is comfortable taking that fight off the top. Cat Sang gets one and instantly brings a balance back for two different fights, uh, then leveled by the Great Leveler, which is that Kayid battling their way across. They haven't been able to, or haven't needed to leave otherwise. That forces the remaining Damon Kia pillows to push into the site. They have site control, 20 seconds, and they're gonna see if they can get a sneaky plant down. Some destruction comes from underneath, and they're a little bit cautious, as they should be. Finds a new location, finds potentially a bit of destruction here. They can't quite get the angles, though. They're gonna have to try and push their way up and decay. They are able to get the plant off here. Another one falls to Demic steadily across the top, but it's coated, has a bit of cover, has a bit of support. They are looking for their fourth. They swing close and finally find some way to put it down. Swaps to the secondary, waits for Kanos to do a slow crawl and approach. There's a bit of intel. That's where he is. And there's the oh, trade! The trade. But he hands it to Dan One Kia. Of course, because the diffuser was down. Otherwise, it would have been a defensive round with the trade that came through, so. The diffuser that was planted there, winning that round. Beautiful clutch in the end there. Two and four situation, I believe it was in the end, that just hit the side and managed to dig through the strength that Damon Gaming Kia has. Has shown many times. Of course, the team from APAC that managed to get the furthest on the major in Mexico. Unfortunately, was uh, quickly dispatched in the quarterfinals with a 2-0 loss against Liquid. But it was their first ever, well, big international event as well. So it's expected that they wouldn't be going on a miracle run straight away and win the entire tournament. Experience very valuable for this team. And now, first round is in on the attack, so that would be a great help. Stalin currently hunting for some drones, setting up a, a very tall hold from, well, basically the bedroom and gym. All the way down into the kitchen and the bar, up downstairs into church and arsenal. So it's going to be uh, multiple layers to fight through here for DK, or they can decide to just directly hit the site. 
if we're going to talk about a clarity of clutter, one of the things worth pointing out is the top of kitchen, actually. They've had a little bit of a renovation in terms of where the air vents are, where the metalwork is across the top. So it's probably not going to be something that you see. It's tough to tell. Thank you for trying. Um, as Woogie Man instantly finds Demic, but again, it's if you're ever in that kitchen, look up, you'll see the roof is slightly different, yes, through the reinforcement. Well, next to the one that was not reinforced yet, so maybe he was going to go for a late one, but it seems like he was trying to run away and that actually got him shot, so might have tried to reinforce, died right afterwards, and that means that, you know, CCTV can be opened up just a little bit easier now. Blowtorch still in the hands, of course, of Boogeyman can use to uh, to cut through the uh, the reinforcement that's there. Canis now, with that nitro, is uh, eager to throw that to uh, to the actual door, the garage door, but no one will be coming from that side. It has CCTV control. It will be a safer entry to uh, to really go for. Just a bit of pressure into construction right now as Hetty is playing close with the FO12 onto the window in secret. Wants to try something a bit bold, but as Soldier gets a kill on the other side, realizes that they might not need to take that risk so far. Soldier is going to be under an immense amount of pressure and falls to Kota, just sort of locking off that cross angle on the top. The slow creep up around the bar. Hey, we got a little glimpse and a little bit of further of a glimpse. That's a new door. Bar bar. Welcome. Slight changes there as it gives you a little bit more of a rotation, a little bit more of a stretch and a pace to what was otherwise a bit of a dead end where you just found yourself serving drinks until you were inevitably killed. The footprints will lead them both up and down the stairs, puts Yas in a very tricky situation as they're aware they're between a rock and a hard place and both of those things are armed. For sure, Zazzy. Just rotating around. Yes, just holding the angles. No, someone will be coming up. And now there's actually a rotation there. Spots the shadow, gets the kill. Sees a second one coming up the stairs. Yes, with the double. That's a four and one left now. Canas, the last man standing inside of Motorcycle, goes aggressive, gets pinged by the Jekyll. They know he will be coming. Manages to pick up a single kill. Goes for the second, but coated. Not able to be taken out. The chase is on with the pistol right here. Canas wants this kill. He wants to drop that defuser, but now decides he needs to head back down. 50 seconds, and the drop in blue will be there. Cat Saying will shut him out as he has to come back down through the main stairs. Will not be able to come far. Good attempt from him. He was spotted, managed to get a kill. Just unfortunately, not two in a diffuser. If he would have gotten the diffuser there, it would have been a completely different round. It was almost this moment where you could see the sort of cogs whirring. He'd been, he was in a four versus one, never great but he'd almost taken two of the bodies out. He knew he had an isolated one versus one at this situation, and you're up against a Habana. That Type 89 has about as many bullets as people have fingers and toes. It's not a long firing weapon for long engagements. He wanted to press that. 40 seconds, then you've got it into a two versus one. You assume the next one's gonna be another two versus one as the fight you just faced. It was a clever decision, but unfortunately couldn't quite catch it. And you know, there's always that risk and reward factor because you don't really know who has the diffuser at this moment in time. There's no visible saddlebag on the side and there's always the point of caution. Well, I'm up here, they might be down there and doing diffusery things. Talon, again and going for the CCTV site, will be putting up the reinforcement. That's four in the garage, one in the connector, then we get the replay. See, here you see the shadow actually coming in. See that? And that is going to be uh, the reason, the pure reason, why you always play with shadows on. Gives you a bit of a heads up when someone is creeping around the corner. Yes, able to pick the double kill up in advance. As the town setup is starting to shape up. Creating a rotation this time, allowing Demic to uh, rotate back towards the side a bit more freely. Magnets being used. Uh, ADS is there as well, heavy onto the NC projectile setup here for Talent. Of course, using the laser gates as well. Still two in pocket, not quite sure where they will be used. Okay, there we go. One onto the CCTV window, and then one towards construction, logically speaking. It's going to be uh, trying to deny as many of these throwables as possible. However, it picks strength of uh, DK. It's not yes. always the. Uh, what do you say? No, it's just medics will show something new. Oh, the, the rotation from uh, one side to the other? Yeah, the outside rotation. Look at that. Beautiful. You can pass through that now. It's very helpful. And they got rid of the spawn piece. That as well. That rotation is actually more useful right, than you sorry. think. Because you don't have to <laughs> uh, repel all the way up to the roof anymore. It saves you a couple of seconds. 
if you want to go. Yes. So uh, that's definitely some good stuff. Similar stuff uh, on bank, of course, as well, where you can go from alley to uh, to the street and the other way around. Move some of the spawn peaks there as well. So I'm going to be very excited to see Bank coming out for the first time. But we're on Clubhouse now in round three. Yeah. It's currently what we're in. Damon Kia. Bank is for the streets. Clubhouse is for right now. And we're currently seeing a little bit of a slower approach here. They're able to get the wall open as they were before. There's a bit of caution as the roam is round on the bottom of blue. They have obviously some attention being paid towards the potential of that lounge danger and damage they're slow and steadily making their way across but that's sort of club as you said before that rotation across the top is actually a huge amount of saving time because club is big it's so vast on the external walls getting from a to b oh, if oh. something starts to go wrong is an absolute danger great play drops there going for fishing can't quite almost does though catch the body on the other side demic did some heroics previously with no more ads's it puts them in a very hot situation woogie man is going to make sure he doesn't fall to the same hop over the top as he did before they're concerned Demic is playing a very dangerous game here is able to get to another corner takes a different fight but they're in the sight and they have 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Canis is off. Hattie gets taken care of. Soldier, the one that is still deep inside. Inside Cash, able to pick up one. Will be able to secure at least a bit of pressure here, but unfortunately gets taken out straight after. It's DK that currently sets themselves up for a 3-0 in terms of rounds. And this time managed to be even more convincing hitting CCTV Cash. Able to shut down a player on the rafters a bit more effectively using the RC Retiro to get rid of the ADSs, which made sure that the grenade would be dealing damage, forcing the Cade to move up towards, of course, the rotation. And timeout will be called. Talon most likely will be going for that timeout because they have been losing three rounds in a row now, all on the defense. And they really need to get a couple of rounds in if they want to have a shot at the win here today. Damon Kia, even when they're a little bit back against the wall, there was the chance in that opening round where Talon had really good momentum. They had themselves sort of roughly consistently as the body advantage. It came down to a death trade in a post-plant situation. If that had occurred before the Palmer done, it would have been their round. And it came down to the bravery of the two remaining Damon Kia players to push themselves onto the side, to sort of throw themselves in and say, well, we know they're underneath. We know they've hot hopped down into lounge we can try and stick this. We can try and push us into a post plant. And then at least we have that working in our favor. And it did. So they're not as far away from a round as a 3-0 would suggest. But the more rounds that are being played, the longer that they're in this sort of situation, the further and further they're seemingly getting from being able to pull themselves into a round. All right. As we head on to round number four now, after the quick tactical timeout. And is DK still in the charge, having the two hard breaches available to you. You heard, uh, you heard Dask, Fresh and Jess that you should probably ban a hard breacher if you want to stop the attack from doing well. And while that hasn't happened, the Thatcher came through. There's many alternatives now. You can just use grenades. You can use um, the RC Retiros to come through. There's plenty of other ways to, you know, deny uh, Electro Claws or to deny Bandit Batteries or Mute Jammers from stopping you from using your breaching tools. And well, they uh, decided to go for the Thatcher Ben nonetheless. And that means that it might be an attack side of Clubhouse here today. So Talon is definitely not done yet. They just want to get a couple of defense rounds in as a bit of a buffer zone. So at least have the opportunity to win it in regulation. Bit of a change of pace and a change of sight. They're going to throw themselves into the gym bedroom instead and see if this can bring them a little bit more success. A pretty standard extension. They have, obviously, the outside walls of CCTV reinforced as well. They've got a bit of a stretch here. Woogie Man is going to be the first to approach. He's not going to be slowed too much, but there's the play underneath. The open hatch down into Armory. They're really extending themselves all the way. A bit of a high line to make sure that rotation gets caught up, catches the sliver in the middle, and forces Soldier to not be able to rotate that side. Putting up the Frost mats, of course, as well. There's the rest of Talon just trying to go for some aggressive peaks in his early game here at first minute. Repel being up there. A bit too late to try and catch it off, so Rin is now safely onto uh, the subroof, or highway, as some people call it. 
Sees coming out, trying to uh, to deal with some of that utility into the bedroom, and uh, it's just looking for an ADS now, a frost mat, and we'll find a frost mat that is going to be at least allowing a singular entry point. And the second one will be coming in now, probably taking care of the second frost mat, I would say. Now it's Rin that takes care of Demic. They swung wide to get that Flores drone, and Rin was there to be able to punish them back. The Claymore is going to stop the hop out. Soldier wants to go for a little bit more of a stretch towards that window. But with the open line, it makes it very cautious. There it is, though. The stretch swings round. Hetty on the back foot is able to get one more, but there's the watch on the side. Just went right past it. And that was a very easy pickup for Rin from a very standard hold. Now they've got to try and drive themselves back up the main stairs. Two bodies are there, slightly isolated with an open... They take the moment to swing past, but yes. Well, catches Aziz on the back foot, puts Kanos into a tight situation. More flashes, which are obviously more potent this time round, and that last one catches them, and yes, catches the bit of a revenge. One more from the same window. No, Hedy actually gets the body in logistics first. They're well aware of where they are. Going to get the plant down, and it's the hop over that yeah. catches Rin a third. Eddie uh, tried to get back in somehow, but it's just a super tiny angle that's being held here. And as soon as you show yourself, Rin, of course, with the LMG never needing to reload, can always contest that angle in that case. Able to pick up the fourth round by picking up two, three kills in that round. I'm not quite sure anymore, but just holding the angle there, holding the flank, really effective. And as you said, the cage stepped out to get the RC Retiro, but as a result, got picked up by Rin, who was holding that window. So it was a bit of an eye of an eye, it's just that the eye that Talon lost was a bit bigger. For her, and the timeout unfortunately didn't bear them any success. Neither did, changing to a site that they hadn't dabbled on before. It becomes a bit of a risky situation now, because I guess when you're looking at these bands, Thatcher off the board is a pretty standard one. Without the removal of a hard destruction, surprisingly, our analysts have called this as something correct. It is still playing into the hands of Damon Gear, a team that's very good at getting aggression onto hatches, getting very good cross angles and holds, and we're seeing it continually from them. We're seeing them able to punish mistakes driven by other members of the players there, where we had the Flores drone swing that carried out a little bit wider, and there, where we had the angle being held across the window of construction or across the top of the stairs. They're playing a very well put together game, and allowing them to do that with all of the hard destruction on a map like club it plays well for the attackers definitely does well as Kenneth uh, prepares a bit of well a trick you would dare to say he's trying to trick the opponents he's trying to trick dk into thinking that he's active inside of the garage trying to go for a bit of a spawn peak of course none of that is true drop down into oil back to the side putting down these ads's like uh, a good Jaeger main should do. We know that's not always the case, putting down the ADSs, especially not in your local ranked games. Either way, um, it is going to be uh, a hold again for Talon. We see the Maestro, we see the uh, Yokai drones coming out from the Echo. Smoke as well, so a lot of well pressure will be on trying to delay and trying to deny the plant to come down from, uh, from DK. It's just that DK, they never really needed to go for the plan. They always just overrun the side, get a lot of the kills, and as soon as they lock you out of the sides, that's when they start to plant. And we well, still have time to try and deny after that. All of the Talon players are playing themselves around the site generally this time. There's none of that huge extension and pressure they've seemingly liked to apply before and I guess we'll see if this is the one that starts to bode them a little bit more success. Previously they've been quite happy to explore the full stretches of the map which to be fair on site and in the modern game you do see that generally more often than not. There's the first impact that's able to catch some of those ex Kairos. They're punishing it. There's the second Did set of Flores kill? drone kill. The word that happened. Oh, that's one that we're going to have to have a look at in the replays later when we're allowed to see what happened there because that is rare. Was he on an Echo Drone? Was he locked in and just punished? That's my assumption. And it's probably right because... Oof. 
And a grenade might be able to pick up two players as well. If Katzing tosses it in at the right moment, it comes in, but just plenty of time for players to readjust. A second one will come in as well. That is a better one. That will get heady. And that is going to be removing the player that is playing instead of motorcycle. Demic will fall back towards the church. The hatch will be opening up. Nitros are being tossed out in pure desperation and not hitting anything. 50 seconds on that clock. And DK are setting themselves up for good success here. There's going to be another RC material that will blow up. Forces Kenos to play behind the boiler. Well, they know exactly where you are now. Now they've just got to try and apply the pressure onto the site itself. Look at this. So well put together pressure. It's what I was talking about from their attacks before and why oh, no. you've got to limit them. The combination of the drone going around. They have the pops and the pings on the other side. Soldier's able to get one more and suddenly the body behind the utility box is blinded but not for as long as they thought. Ring around the rosies and it's a trade that locks it out. Suddenly it's just a two versus one. Demic. But he has 10 seconds and they have to try and stick this plant. Just look for the cover. The pings are coming out pretty consistently. There's oh, no. the body with the diffuser there's a man running away and there is a talon round two seconds one second no oh. damn drop shot with a revolver it was so close to it it could have been the other way around but just the well the back of the hibana sticking out just in time for the tcsg to pick up that kill but that was a very close one there i could have gone dk's way again Again, still wondering how the RC Retiro kill came in. That might have been just placed down on a piece of utility, maybe an evil eye, and the Echo just rotated in at a fortunate timing and got killed by it, or, as you said, could have been on the Yokai, could have been picked up as a result of that. But we almost saw a second kill coming in when Canis was playing behind the boiler. Didn't really realize that the RC Retiro was right next to him until the very final second and managed to get out of uh, the explosive, well, lethal range. Talon pick up a round, though. A single round for now, and they will be trying to push it to a second. They're going back to the top floor, they're going back to gym and the bedroom. Have to be careful to not, again, get picked up by these, well, angles of rain that will just shut you out uh, from the construction side, basically only leaving you the staircase to rotate back up. All right, this is a site that otherwise fell away from them before. It was a couple of costly moments that were punished, and it was sort of basic punishments as well, especially the kills on the construction window. The second, when you're in a one versus five, okay, you know you've got a lot of bodies to get through either way, but the first, hmm, it's something that you should generally be aware of. All right, same rotation being made again as before, logically speaking. Question is just that will Rin be able to shut down three players from just the highway position, not having to enter the building at all again? Seems like a bit more pressure will be coming down from uh, the CCTV cache. Of course, opening up a bit of a rotation there, a bit of line of sight into CCTV. That makes it a bit more risky for our players to rotate into the area and use the window that looks out towards the balcony, towards the highway, because that is often a place where well, a lot of players are around. Maybe with the diffuser looking to go for a bit of a jump in, and it's well, pretty, uh, pretty detrimental if you lose a player as a result, because... Uh, Someone would be able to peek through that window on CCTV. It is being watched now. It has been opened up. And thus will be uh, continued to watch for quite a bit more. Still scrappy fights and the reveal of Kanos underneath. This was a problem that they didn't feel they had to solve before, but it seems like it's piqued Rin's curiosity this time round. Previously, they knew that there were people underneath. They had the watch on the main stairs and they were able to punish them at the same time. But look at the positioning on Katsang. He is droning out from the opposite side of Strip. They're just trying to force them into a tricky situation. The drone in the toilets, well, it won't buy them much time, but time is what they're wasting at the minute as they're sort of seeing if they can pinch and push him out of a tricky situation. The aggression here hit by that will give the game away that he's still around this corner with its instant impact the hot droning comes through hey and when i talk about the teamwork the push here it has pushed canos into a corner either side there's somebody with a gun three of them in fact and there's not really anyone to offer some support apart from a swing on the main stairs they're able to get the first canos locks it off as the pressure comes round yas finds demic in the meantime as the push i believe happens above at the same time Grenade being tossed in, hoping to uh, force Kanos out of a position, and there you go. There was nowhere he could go. Gets the kill there, Katsang. 
And he's allowing them to get the man advantage. However, you have lost Soraya, and one of your big impact players that the team revolves around now is set during the major. And that is a grenade that drops onto the actual uh, jacuzzi there. Does a little bit of damage down onto Kota. Nothing too big, but as he's, as he's falling back, manages to pick up another kill as well. Through the wall, bringing the favor back towards Stalin. That's a one-man advantage, but something they will have to work with. There is still some frost mats around on the side, so jumping from windows will be very difficult, meaning that they will almost be forced to go through what they're currently trying to do to Jacuzzi Wall. Oh, Another beautiful. perfect grenade there from Katsang. Caught, though, instantly by the Frost Mat coated. Well, he's going to look to try and stick this instead. Wants to bait a bit of the push and the pressure here. They would have heard the very loud Frost Mat pop off. The ping comes through. Bulletproofed and defaulted the whole way down. And there it is. The second round that goes the way of Talon. They get themselves a 4-2 split. They get themselves a precious bit of momentum. And as I sort of said before, okay, if we're going to talk about the hard destruction and all of it being open to Dan one Kia, it's the same thing with Talon. With all of that opportunity, with all of that chances, you've not got your Thatcher, sure, but you still have maneuverability and manipulation, and you still have Maverick, which is an important take. Off and gone. Look at this. Three hard destruct on the board. Maverick joined by Hibana and Ace. It could still be some very promising attacks here for Talon. It could still be a very promising attack here indeed. There is plenty of destruction available to the team. They just need to have something to deal with the Mew Gemmers. Now, of course, with the way that the Mew Gemmers work now is that it's an actual sphere instead of the cone that we had before. And that means that, you know, the top left and top right of the wall are no longer truly secure if you're only using one Mew Gemmer to open up. And that gives you opportunities. That does mean especially with the x -Karos. you can get a couple of pellets in, create a bit of a line of sight you can then use to look through the sight to potentially get a grenade right onto the Mew Gemmer to open up the rest of it. So those are things to keep in mind for now. They might use a double Mew Gemmer setup there to prevent it from happening. Or they, ooh, actually, no, they're just going to put it up far. So like this, there is uh, quite, a bu uh, quite a bit actually available to be opened up, I believe. Not sure if they'll use it, but it is definitely available. That's it. They have the option, um, but the use is... It's the consistent argument of what is used and what is there for that sort of stretch and display. There's no reinforcement on the middle wall across the top of red, potentially. I just left that, and the Zeus goes very, very wide. Yeah, they've left that all soft. It's a bit of a danger play, I think. Because that's generally your last bastion. That's your last hold, is the top of red. It's definitely your last hold. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the reasoning behind this. Maybe they use reinforcement elsewhere to protect the bedroom uh, or jacuzzi. Uh, seems like they locked off logistics office, so interesting choice there. And he will be uh, able to open up and kill the Mew Gemmer from there, I believe, as he's not sure what he's quite trying to do. Maybe he's lining up. He's, he's going to try and uh, go for the actual... There you go. Has opened up a bit of an angle. Can shoot the, uh, the actual Mew Gemmer now, and that means they have the opportunity to go for the exit there, but it also enables the opportunity to go for an impact trick. Well, the grenade comes through and there's the impact trick to be able to make it just a mirror window, but just a mirror window. Oh, it's still dangerous either side. Yes, knocks soldier off the roof and pushes it into a four versus four. They have now lost that ace. They've lost those Selmas, so they've got to sort of rely potentially on the Habana to offer some support here. We've talked about the vastness of Clubhouse, how it's a very big map. It forces these huge rotations over the top, and sure, some of these outside changes might make things a little bit smoother, but still, when you're on the Amint 20 mark and you've lost one of your main ways in, you've really got to capitulate quickly. They gotta really um, get the ID down now. They need to figure out a second point of interest because while well, the Hibana will now create the rest of the hole that is necessary to go through, that will give them an opening. But you know, one opening is often uh, none because that one will be watched with literally every single gun they have. That means it needs to be challenged completely. And as you can see now, the Molotovs are coming out as well. So pushing through is not going to be helping much so they need to create a second way in nitro being tossed out that comes a bit too short Hedy will uh, quickly go off but quickly gets back on as well and as he's playing from below is looking to see if he can use any of these verticals 
Well, this is now the tough fight. As I said, Red is off in the last bastion, and it seems like they're playing with the idea of charging their way up the two staircases at the same time. The pings come through, burning the ADSs and trying to catch them. There was none there, and it became a quick, easy pick up. But 20 seconds. The Chanker is doing everything he can to slow it. We can see them prepping to try and fight their way up Red. A very dangerous position there from Yas, expecting the swing round to come through. Woogie Man still underneath with a C4. No, already used and already played at this point. He's just got to try and shoot his way through. It's Kanos for one more. The swing up oh, red. No, He's the holding his angle. No, he gets like seen at the last second. Oh, he turned around. He was so patient. He should have just lain still because a bit of sound made them aware of the fact that he was laying down in that corner. It could have worked so greatly for them. Able to pick up a double kill potentially. Of course, already the diffuser going down inside of cash, so... That was something that um, he might have not been ready for. Hope the Diffuser, of course, would have been on rafters. But well, 4-3, Talon fighting back. Looking to bring it back to an equal scoreline now. Just one round away from achieving that. After the four consecutive rounds that DK managed to get. Their attack. It is now Talon with two defenses and one offensive round in. Looking to bring that up to a second offensive round at least to bring it up to 4-4. Equalize that score. Release a little bit of the pressure. It was good aggression. And I think is all that they really had left at that point. The structured approach, the use of utility, it was costly for them. They couldn't quite make everything connect properly. It was good counterplay. They lost the body through the only opening they truly made at the start. And the body was their way of making a smoother and better opening when they realized that that was not an entrance that they could take and they realized all they had left was a minute and guns and driving themselves through onto the site luckily they're pretty good at that talon and they proved it there being able to isolate those fights being able to sort of i think take damn on kira a little bit by surprise in some of those locations and you know, it's something where I guess you don't want it to be the basis, but having it as something that you can fall back to, they've proven that it is a very good asset. Definitely a good asset. Now DK opening up some of these windows and making themselves known for potentially using spawn peaks, jump outs, or any aggression that can come from them. Hopefully to slow down Talon. Of course, that's the eventual goal because, you know, a little bit more time wasted in that previous round and it could have resulted in a win. As they're going in now, of course, the Roamers can be taken care of by the Jekyll. Spotted a barricaded door there. Now we'll be finding some footsteps onto the rafters. That's the mozzie that will be spotted out inside of the gym bedroom. Has no clue probably where he got spotted from. This will be very, very careful to make sure he's not going to get picked up by any of the uh, well, roamers or roam clearing operators that might be present on the attack. Of course, he doesn't know that the majority of them are located around CCTV to try and open up that area. A woogie man has slipped his way underneath. He's still got a bit of a deep roam and the potential coated gets forced further away, caught in a crossfire. And another one falls, but they might be able to get them back up. Eddie couldn't quite get the connection that they wanted. Kota was able to slip by, and Yas knocks Thanos off the top of the board. Katsang is trying to creep his way up. There's a drone just by the feet of the down body, which is doing pretty consistent pings, and Soldier is able to find one with Aziz quickly getting the double down. Look at this. They flooded their control, but look at that. The others are able to rotate down to what is actually the site itself. A lot of time used, of course, in getting that top floor control. Now they still need to check whether or not the first floor will be completely secure as well. It's going to be costing you a couple of seconds, and after that you need to work on opening up the hatch. And you're looking over to the other side, you still see two impacts, you still see a nitro cell available. The motorcycle hatch has been left soft, so an entry point has been created. Just, again, they need to find a way to work on crossfires with that. And it seems that for now, they're trying to push in from the main stairs. The head gets spot up, and Zazis with a double kill make that a triple kill. As the second rotation was caught off. DK really faltering here right now, just being picked apart on their defense. Yes, suddenly all of them are open to this engagement and they sort of threw themselves to a very high and deep hold here and now as the plant gets put down inside the church, they're finding themselves punished. It's still another late plant, but 
This is something, as I said, that Talon are very good at. They can drive themselves. They can find their own momentum. And here on their attack, where they're the ones able to dictate the pace, Tamon and Kira finding themselves a little bit taken by surprise. It's a three versus one post plant with a very little amount of health. They're well aware of where you are. And there's an angle from three separate locations. The one under the table sprays first, gets the kill. Talon, they get themselves another round. There you go. We're all equalized up now, Talon. Able to bring it up to 4-4, and as we mentioned before, this game might be about more than just getting three points here. It could be about relegation at the end of the season. It's something Talon doesn't want to be in, and well, you wouldn't expect DK to be in after their performance at the Major in Stage 2. But due to the nature of APAC North, there's three teams that will be entering relegation battles at the end of the stage. Currently, it seems like T1 will be going over there. I'm not sure if that's already confirmed with the loss they had. At least they're getting very close. And then we have Talon as one of the other teams. And I believe it was uh, Fav that was also currently inside of that danger zone. Uh, but I'm going to quickly check up on that before I spread too much misinformation. <laughs> before you're spreading rumors. Before I'm spreading rumors, indeed. I'm trying to load it up. There we go. And it is, yeah, five indeed. 19 points currently in sixth place. So Talon is currently two points behind them. That means they can take that sixth place by taking up the full win here. Oh, this beautiful shot here, actually. Yeah, yeah it was the pings that came through. And being able to pick up one here, just seeing the sliver of the head, and then instantly taking the mantle and the pressure and punishing the next as well. I mean, it's a split-second moment. By the time you're able to convey who had killed you and where they were, you prob you know, the next player's already dead. It it's no real fault there, I think, of Damwon Kia's to not react with the pace because that was just all perfect positioning and reaction there from Aziz instead. And that little bit of lady luck that we love to see. It's always a bit of luck involved. But sometimes you need to, uh, need to make your own luck and... Yeah, something Talon seems to be doing right now. Just pushing forward. Making sure that DK doesn't really have an opportunity to get really into their defenses. And it seems to be working out quite well for them. Again, heavy hold towards the bedroom. Not quite sure how that will be working out. I believe there's only two, three players around on the actual site. So if they're managing to hit this very quickly, this could be detrimental for the side of uh, DK. Because if they just decide to go for it and just rush the site, then what can they do? It is literally just coded in cash and a player, or Yas here, right here in the corner, that they have as uh, a security measure. Now, down on Kia, I guess what I'm hoping to see is a little bit more reactivity towards the play and a little bit more connected, I think, is a little bit better word there. Is what we saw on their attack was brilliant. They always had their cross angles, they always had their pace. Here, seemingly, they keep being taken a bit by surprise. All these fights are happening in all these different places, and they're never quite the ones that seem to be leading that pressure and leading that charge. It's always a little bit of, oh, they're here, and now they're here as well, and that's something that seemingly consistently slipping away from them. The slow creep and crawl behind the body underneath the crouch walk might take Rin by surprise. Who is going to be more aware of who first? You would assume Aziz will be able to get this catch, especially now that the trigger's been pulled, and there it is. Slow crept his way to the billiards and pockets a player. Able to get that kill in, yes. Uh, receiving a little bit of damage as well by some pressure that comes in from below. Some vertical pressure, that is. Bit of soft wall left on that up there. Nothing too big though. It's just an angle that will be used to stop anybody from rotating back through the actual uh, window on the rafters. As yes, takes more damage through the drone hole. Tries to contest back, but it's only a one HP. Really, not sure how much you're going to be able to do from there on. Has to be quite careful. He's one of those star players that really needs to stay alive for as long as possible. Nitro gets tossed out. They know of his position now. Flashbangs and grenades are coming in as a result. And that will be a kill onto Katzing. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but he's fully flashed at least. Still alive. He needs to get the kill to try and spot his feet out. A little bit of damage done. One player moving up on the stairs right now. Spots out the player again. Not able to knock at the frag. Eventually gets it, but gets traded by Yes, however. 
Well, if I talk about the late plants from before, here is probably the worst situation. We've seen them trying to strong arm their way through. They're popping everything they can. Every single smoke canister from both teams gets played. It's in the default, but a C4 is in the pocket of Woogie Man over the top. It doesn't quite drop the right player, though. One down on the opener, a post plant situation. The spray round suddenly, a one versus one. They've been able to slip their way outside of the breach that they'd opened up much earlier, but they're well aware of it. Trying to bait the play, Kanos! Locks it off, just a cacophony of death and the one man left standing is the one that got the diffuser down. Tactical timeout seems to be being called by uh, by DK here. And if Yas wasn't the player that managed to get, well, of course it was a headshot in the end there, but if he had a little bit more HP, he might have been feeling more confident to swing the player that would be on the uh, plateau right next to the CCTV one. He was taken down to 1 HP, still managed to pick up 3 or 4 kills in that singular round. That is an impressive feat. But of course, it's just we're talking about a player that consistently has been one of the best on DK. And right now, 30 seconds left in their tactical timeout. Don't see much talking going on. It's their coach probably taking the charge here, telling them what to do, what is going wrong, what they need to pay attention to for these next couple of rounds. See the uh, the yes from the boogeyman coming in. He understands what needs to happen, and as the timer almost runs out, we will head back into that game. But this time, it will be Talon that is in front. After the four rounds that DK managed to win, they haven't been able to win a singular round anymore. It's Talon that now has five consecutive rounds, and if they manage to get yet another one, that will put them on one point, and the opportunity, of course, to reach the full three. It was always going to have high potential in this game. It was always going to be one where we might be able to see some success. Damon Kia have played very, very well recently, but Talon were always that sort of up and coming yep. team. Hey, hey, it's us and I'm Giant. Hi. And I think what we're sort of looking at now is that come together and that sort of manifest. It's always this conversation of what team is the one that's able to bring stuff together? What team is the one that's able to keep pushing and keep growing as a team? And for this sort of sake, Talon were that one. They were that sort of secondary that was a bit overshadowed by Damon Kia, who had a little bit more of a sort of magnanimous rise. Yeah, definitely so. And and DK definitely, um, you know, a good team. They performed well during the major. Just maybe, you know, getting used to the online environment again here for official games because land plays so much different um, than it does online. And and often we do see teams struggle a little bit getting back into the rhythm. So that might be what happened for uh, Cyclops. That might be what's happening right now for uh, Damon Kia here. Um, but that doesn't take anything away from the performance that Talon is currently putting up. They're putting in some insane rounds. They brought it back from a 4-0 behind to a 5-4 lead right now. And they are the ones that have the opportunity to lock down a match point first. So that is something um, to look forward to for these next couple of rounds. Whilst we're quickly getting the lobby and everything set up again. And now DK, as you see them right here, um, they're just relaxed. They're getting back ready. Just taking some drinks. So I believe Woogieman uh, gets some gum out as well. Helps the concentration, I believe. Um, chewing on something. It does. Um, also relaxed faces here at Talon. They didn't know what to do. Getting ready. He even arms behind the head there. Just a big stretch quickly. Shows that they're not too worried. Yeah, like, you're, d you're describing this like a nature dog. Yeah, right? It's like... Like, here we have the esports players. Here we have players. the esports players in their natural habitats. And the forehead of Hedy. <laughs> Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fair. It's These two teams, they... If we have the expectations of these teams being sort of strong teams, they both are well aware of this. It's, you know, you expect everybody in Tier 1 to be a good team. And generally they are. There are some teams that struggle more, as we saw earlier on in the 7-0. But... Also, you know, some of that is more to expectations. The opening game of the day, Mantis XC9 being able to take a win over um, Cyclops and at one point being 6-2 up. That was unexpected. That was something a little bit where I think they were like, okay, we need to sort of try and get into this game. Here, Damon Kia knew they were up for a fight. And Talon did as well. And I think that's the reason that you're sort of seeing them at this sort of metered level. It's a game that we wanted to go all the way. It was the game of the day for good reason. Yeah. And 
as we get back into it, we'll see if it's one that just continues to keep driving itself further forward. Okay, you can see it on the screens in the background that we're getting back into the game as uh, Clubhouse is on the loading screens up there. We're getting back in for a couple more rounds. It's currently 5 to 4. That means we have three more rounds left in the regulation. I believe that's the right word, right? Regulation? Yeah, yeah. There you go. okay. Just just I almost call it regular time when I just started casting, so I need to make sure that I'm not messing it up. <laughs> it is technically regular time. It, it, it's um, both at the same time. But it's also it's it's primarily it's regulation time. And then you would have added time or overtime. Which is the three extra rounds we will be playing if we will go to six <laughs> six for those of you wondering. If you didn't know how time works, chat, we're here to help. We are here to help and explain you everything. Not everything, actually. We're not experts on the time, time right. and space, but... Talk to, talk to your friends, your parents and your guardians for other stuff. But if you want to know how time works, well, that's us. And if we want to know how this game goes, well, that's them. And that's a 5-4. Talon have threaded a lot of that in a row. They were able to build themselves back. Hey, it was actually all of them in a row. It was a very slow, shaky start. But as I said, the rounds were close. It w it was a 3-0, it was a 4-0, but it was ones where it was a bit give or take. They've proven that now, as they've been able to throw themselves back in. But at the same time, it's still not that far away from down on Kia. They can try and throw themselves back into this. They're more than able. And they're going to see if they can start it here before it hits map point on Jim Bedroom. Yeah. Highway, of course, again... Highly contested area. This time we see a bunch of Alibi Prisma set up around it. Just to uh, give away the position of any player that is looking to pick it. Did they actually push through the window? Can we just go to the other side? I think the guns of the Prisma stick through the window. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so they are... Uh, <laughs> th that might actually be more of a bait because now people are going to see a gun and they're like, oh, there's one inside and you go for a big pre-fire might actually give you uh, some extra information. Either way, it is going to be uh, the windows quickly open up, and as he's on the upside down repel, decides to not try and contest it for now, but it's always good to open it up to just put a bit of extra pressure down. That's often it. Sometimes I see players, uh, people asking, why do they open up windows if they don't use them anymore? Well, it's just to make the defenders scared. Like, there can be someone at this window, so I have to be careful. Waste two, three extra seconds, but... In pro play, those two or three extra seconds, they can literally mean the difference between winning a game or losing it. Now, as they see if they can try and get their way through, finally, that wall falls and they find themselves in a tricky situation. Also, having those Christmas there, what it does is it causes what are sometimes some pretty scrappy firefights to become much more uncomfortable. You're always concerned when you're out on that sort of balcony outside that someone is going to swing you, whether from the bottom of garage or from... Uh, CCTV window if you don't have it fully controlled them being able to I guess get a read on you whilst you try and take a firefight inside the site itself which is how we've seen a lot of kills go the way previously it makes things trickier they're alibis, they're a nuisance but they're a nuisance that has to be dealt with the same way the frost mats were on the other flip side, think of it like that, but here you can see Talon are sort of giving a bit of space towards that side for now. They're doing all the other work that they need to. They're seeing if they can catch anybody on the rotation around from Garage instead. A quick uh, jump down you saw that from Yas after he was being challenged and pushed back into the kitchen. Might not be aware of that. Also, in the meantime, a uh, opportunity for a grenade arises. They have opened up above, trying to get a drone in now to find out whether a player is going to be inside of the... Uh, bathroom or not, of course, has the opportunity to take care of the uh, electric law as well, which then allows you to open up the bathroom. So there's there's multiple reasons to go for that grenade, even though it landed in the shower cabin, managed to take care of the electric law. So that's a good piece of utility there. More spray through comes on the back of that, but 30 seconds and every player is still standing, though some of them are slightly more damaged. It's going to make this last second plant even tougher. It's something that they've been pushed further and further into, and usually they've been able to pull it off. But here, with 15 seconds left and still nobody inside the site, the first fight finally falls into their favor. The swing round just comes out in the favor of Yas. There's one more on the close corners. They can't reload in time. A three versus three. Demic has to just try and dive in. That's going to give the game away. That's going to put the diffuser down on the gym, and that's going to give Damon Kia their first round in a while. Not quite sure what happened there. There was plenty of time to work with at the start of the round. They managed to open up super quickly. 
It's just that after that, they took their sweet time and they weren't able to quite get the kills that they needed. A bit more of aggression was necessary there for Talon to lock in that round and to put themselves into match point. But after the five consecutive round wins and the timeout that came through from DK, we now have them back with a round. And that might actually turn the favor. That might turn the momentum because it's often that after these tactical timeouts, it is uh, the team that called it that suddenly found a little bit of extra magic after they have talked to the coach. And extra magic might be enough to carry DK across the line. What can Talon do? Can they shut them down now? Or is DK going to be the first one to match point? Being a good fight back, and I think, as I said, even when the rounds have been, you know, a four versus one rather than those sort of fights, it, it's still been very late. It's Barbar. -bar. Would you look at that? Barbar. -bar. Bar -bar. It's a sight to I be seen. I wonder what the actual, like the stage bar is called, and what the actual bar is called. If you're looking at the compass, can we watch Wiggerman? Central. Okay, Th that just delayed. We'll get back to it. Oh, Rin, Rin, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, so this is Bar. Okay, go to Katsang. Stage. So it's bar stage. I don't stage. I don't know what people are calling it bar bar. It's yeah, bar no, stage. those No no no, those are the official calls, but it's just funny to call it bar bar. I get it. But, but like it, it, they are the calls are bar and stage in terms of the game and the map. And they have been for a while. In that room that separation was called stage and the little text on the bottom. But how often do we use that and how often do we just go, this is now bar bar? That's it. That's the decision we have to make. Do we want to call it Bar Bar? Or do we want to call it Bar funny State? To call it bar bar, so we're going to call it Bar Bar. This being correct, but nobody likes people who are So the thing that I uh, I want to say about this side like is that I believe if you open that reinforcement, you might be able to get quite a long sight all the way down through that little rotation that now is there with the form of the door from Katsang. So there's definitely opportunity to go for very long lines of sight here. You can even go further and open up the complete wall, play from the bathroom, create, make an even longer one uh, to look inside a stock. Of course, you're not going to be able to completely lock it off, but all you need to really do is, is lock off the entries to the stage uh, right now, because there's no more plant in stage. Uh, in, in, well, there is now in stage. There's not in stock. There we go. I, I can't believe them. Oh, it's... They make it pictures of go. each other. <laughs> I like how they're so quick to just hop down as well. They have that prep ready. But a wide clear has been a consistent from Talon. We've seen them make sure that they have all the angles. It's something that's led into their late planting situation. So they'll generally... You expect them to be aware of a lot of the little plays and a lot of the little moments here. The verticality is something that they want to get this lockdown in control of because otherwise it can become pretty delicate and dangerous. The swing round of Yas here is a bit concerned. He doesn't feel confident holding it with all of the openings that are otherwise all the way around and sure it's kind of necessary to keep a little bit of that if you want to stop an easier plant here down on towards the stage or down towards the dining table itself but otherwise it's not worth losing your life over when they're in a five versus five in this plant situation they were able to take it before and this is what i was talking about you have the opportunity to challenge that reinforced wall from uh, the new door that heads down there gives you an extra angle to work with one that wasn't really there before so uh, usually doesn't really get checked as much you would dare to say yes as well working on a different angle all the way from the stairs so really banking onto the fact that they will be coming in from the stock side as a player gets shown up there there's gonna be a grenade that gets dropped there might be a team kill to come in i'm not quite sure if it got released or not there's nothing blown up yet i think that he put it back in pocket before he went down Things start to come through, and the spray over the top is the one that Woogie Man is able to lock out here. More flashes around the corner of the kitchen as they try and cut down this backside and are able to take it. The rotations come through, the spray over the top as Katzan gets one more. Either side they dance, and finally they lock it off. But look at this a two versus one versus none. Damn on Kia, they're able to claw themselves back in after their time out to oh at least map point, at least OT, where after five rounds were threaded in a row, it didn't seem so I guess, sure, here, though, they've definitely been able to step back in a bit. They stepped in well. The timeout did wonders for them. They have managed to pick up the two rounds that matter. At least to deny talent to go to the well, match point first. DK now has the priority to go for the three points. They have the initiative. They can be the ones to do it. Talent is just fighting for two now. They're fighting for the scraps, for whatever is left. 
as DK is uh, looking to at least start off stage three with a three-pointer. It'll be very helpful. Of course, Cyclops, that wasn't able to do that. Mantis able to get the win here today in the first game of APAC. Is uh, going to be a, well, good start for them after a horrible stage two that they've had. Um, but Cyclops, of course, being the current kings, you would dare to say. Not able to pick up that win is um, setting up good for the story that potentially someone else will be taking over this stage. Well, Talon, you were able to drive yourself through, but it was all very late, and it seems like Damon Kier, as I said, have caught on to that just a little. They were able to, I guess, respond a little bit more to the wait. Let's just hold them out a little bit longer. Let's not try and get ourselves caught in these slightly off angles. They're playing these roams, but they're playing a little bit closer to home and to heart. They're making sure that instead of being a bit debonair with those sort of late swings and don't worry i've got this they go well i don't need to have this because talon are being slow and steady consistently and they really need to find a little bit more pace to the application of the side pressure itself Bren looking for the long angle outside hoping to pick someone up a drone gets spotted instead and moves into secret now canis is the one that tries to benefit from it slowly creeps into the garage but Ren already long gone, takes care of the camera, which at least stops any form of information to flow in towards the side of DK. Of course, the kill, which was most important, is not to be found for now. Soldier has to be careful, though. He's looking to open up onto the kitchen hatch, potentially. Just still some roamers around. Yes, of course, just uh, running around in the kitchen corridor, going downstairs now, but at least made his presence known. The drones are trying to find out whether or not he went towards the bathroom or if he went upstairs or if he would indeed have gone downstairs. Now, upstairs has been locked out. There was a player on the stairs. Oh, they, they still want to make sure that they know for sure that he is back inside instead of still roaming around. Now, as they sort of put this pressure down towards it, the Kaid Claws are going to juggle a little bit there. They are keeping their eyes and angle towards the site itself. With all the DK players, they still want that 5 versus 5 situation. The impact and the trick play around. The grenade doesn't quite catch the body the same way it did before. Cook's the second, and that one... Well, it gets much closer and almost gets the drop there. Can't claw that, but does just claw their way back towards the site. That will stop Church getting an immediate approach, but it was a very good balance of utility there to drive them out of Moto. And definitely try to go quickly to Grenade. Maybe if it was timed a little bit earlier, would have uh, made sure that they were able to pick up the kill. You know, as it explodes right before the hatch opens up, you might be able to combine the two in that case. Either way, Soldier looking from above, hoping to find someone in the back of Armory, but no one is playing there currently. There might still be a piece of utility out there, so a Grenade will be used to dispatch off it. Dealing a little bit of damage to Aziz himself, but Talon, they really need to get a move on now. 30 seconds, just opening up dirt. No one will be playing around that. It seems like it's going to be a full drop. Potentially some support from the main stairs. Well, can they try and finally find a way to break the deadlock as they find themselves in this five versus five attempt yet again, less than 20 seconds, to see if they can stick the diffuser down. The first goes their way and they flood their way into sight behind the back of Kanos, but Katsang drops one, gets dropped a one versus four for Woogie Man. Suddenly they've been able to spray their way around, seize the edge of the diffuser, can't quite get the zaps down, and we find ourselves in a four versus one post plant. They broke the mold of not being able to break the hold here and... Oh, without a time out before, Woogie Man is thinking that they might push him, but I think they're well aware that this is probably not going to be something they can pull back. A quick chat, you assume, is happening on the boards here as we find ourselves angling towards an OT. Damn one Kia, they pulled it that way. Talon fought back, but there's still three more rounds left to go after this. And we are going to the overtime scenario here as Woogie Man. Just quickly trying to go for a bit of a bait there with a, with a nice little tune, hoping to get some kills to uh, up his EPP. He's going to get pushed, gets one, goes for the second one. Is going to be able to land any more kills. The timer, of course, is gone. Gets another before he dies. And uh, <laughs> the, the laughs are there to the side of Talon. As everybody literally flooded the side there, there was no way he was going to be able to get the diffuser down. So everybody could just toss their life at Woogie Man or get the kill. It's a bit of a game. Who will get the kill in that case? Hey, it's all for fun, isn't it? 
it is at the end of the game. Yeah, still, yeah. A uh, end of the day, still a game. You know, so uh, a bit of fun is never wrong, but you want to make sure that you at least are taking your win here. And well, DK, they um, they took their time. They made sure that they, uh, you know, those 45 seconds used it as a bit of a tactical timeout. One that's uh, less formal in the form of uh, saving KD, as some might say. It's not as simple as that, especially not in these situations where you're about to go for overtime. Jim Bedroom being the first side DK will go to in this overtime. They will want to start this off strong. They will want to start this off with a win because that is going to be increasing their chances by quite a bit. So that's it, isn't it? That's the story right now. We've seen generally more positivity on the attacks across these two teams. Who's going to be the first that breaks the mold and actually finds that sort of drive here because the favor would sort of be in Talons at this moment in time. At least Amon Kier have had a bit of time to get an idea and this was the sites where they found some modicum of success. They found a way to sort of punish and play it around the time that was otherwise being put forward. It was a lot of wasting, a lot of pressure and a lot of making sure that when push came to shove, they had their angles in place. Was in place indeed. Preparing your uh, your jump outs, your potential jump outs. That is again putting the uh, the prisoners right close up to the uh, to the actual window. Same setup we've seen before, and same approach again from Talon that we've seen before. Just open up the window, go up to the roof, do your job, and get as much damage in as possible. As soon as they will manage to open up this jacuzzi wall, they will instantly. Uh, re, well, or ra rather reinforce the bathroom wall, and, and with that, basically give them a second piece uh, that they need to work with. So a grenade will be tossed in. Oh, to actually go and into kill uh, the drone there. Yes, able to pick up the kill into Hedy. That's a very good start. The grenade will take care of the electro claw, or at least it shoot. Yes, indeed it did. Not going to be in time to actually uh, make sure that they will be able to catch it. Quite dangerous there, actually, on the reinforce. Could have lost his head. But that will be locked off now. That will be uh, electrified as well with the Electro Claw. And making sure that they have, use e uh, have to use even more utility to get inside the bathroom. Now as they've obviously been able to take out what is a very important mantle. We talked about having all the hard destruction that was on the board before. And now I guess we're seeing what happens when that's the first gone we've seen an uh salma punch we've always seen the ace punish before but losing the maverick is in a lot of people's books a lot more of a cost some say that the hardest to bands on this to attack is when thatcher and maverick are both gone in a way we get a little bit of a taste of that of course the first opening has already been made but by losing that maverick you're losing an extra opportunity beautiful kill from yas taking down Aziz. It's going to be uh, your sledge gone. So the extra grenade he might have been carrying is not going to be able to be used. So they're going to try and brute force it now. Demic will be able to pick up a kill. Canis is quite aggressive here as well. Manages to pick up one somehow, even though he's fully concussed by his own concussion. And we're finding in a two on three situation now. DK still favored, still having the angles here, but they need to retake the side at some point. Spray around the top for Yas, puts them in a three versus one. Demic wants to hop in, but it's a cross angle that punishes them. Damn one, Kia. They've been able to put themselves onto map point. Most importantly, they've been able to take another defense. Where both these teams have suffered more, can they drive themselves for back into the lead here and back onto their attacks where the last two of them failed? Talon, their best defenses were their final two. Will they remember that or will they remember how this game opened? That is the big question. Are they going to be the first four rounds of DK? Or is Talon going to be the fifth to, was it, tenth round um, that we have seen where they managed to get five in a row compared to the four in a row that DK put on the board? What defense are we getting? Church Arsenal is the site we are going to. Verticality will be off play. The Mute coming in, the Cade coming in as well. But we've seen quite effective takes coming down from DK. We're dealing with these players that are in these strong points. C, motorcycle. Um, C, for example, um, blue. So that is something that they need to be careful of right here. As yes, again, with a beautiful kill, somehow not um, picked up by the side of Talon. The bailiff shots, of course, was quite far away, so might have just not heard it at all. It's unfortunate to lose someone like that, but it's a good extra pick for DK. 
Here we're seeing a bit of an extension as well before. We have the echo on the board. We have some sort of semblance of being able to capture and I guess lock down the potential of those plants. But to be honest, that wasn't really what DK was slow at. They were quite quick in terms of getting into the site and applying the pressure where they needed to. And I think what we're seeing now from Talon is a bit more of an extension. They're trying to waste some time. They're going to try and say, well, we like the slow plant game and we're going to make you play it. Yeah, putting up the Mew Jimmer, of course, next to the drone on the plateau is going to be, uh, well, causing some uh, some panic potentially because they made a punch hole there. That gives away the information that someone has been there. And if you don't want to drone it, well, you cannot use that drone all because that loses you your drone. Boogeyman now forced to go back up, forced to pick up that drone and to put it into a position where he can actually get in from, uh, potentially just... Um Sledge through or uh, ask for Sledge to come in to try and help. But for now, it's just one member, Soldier, that is on that top floor realm. He's trying to hold on with everything he got for as long as possible, hoping to not be spotted by any of these drones. And the best way to do that is to try and dance around it, because if you sit still in one spot, they're going to come for you eventually. If you move around, you have the opportunity to dodge it somehow. Well, the Echo drone is just going to pull back. One of the things that you'll often see with the Echo and especially in this region that I saw a lot, is just using them as movable drones, using them as your own moving intel. There's not really many options for that in terms of the defenders. Sure, you have a lot of intel ops. You have Pulse, you can be a little bit manipulative, but you've got to be there. You have Mozzie that's the closest because they can capture drones, but there's no guarantee you'll get those drones. In the play against it here, with Echo, you're guaranteed to have two of these drones that, sure, they can pop things off, but they're otherwise roaming intel, intel that you can move. It's not stuck and static like the rest of them, and that allows them to do these sort of fluid plays to kind of press against them and get live reads and intel here. It's a very dangerous place to be in, just trapped on the corner. They have all the lock off, but look at the time. This is what they wanted to waste, and they have done a fantastic job of wasting it compared to the previous round. Yeah, the dance around was perfect for Soldier there. Managed to waste two full minutes. Nitro coming out now as well. They managed to get the kill, but everybody is hauling back towards the side. Everybody is setting up in their positions, waiting for the final attack to commence because there's not much time left. The RC Retiros will be taking care of some of the utility by just slowly going down. Not quite sure how far they are going to be able to get. I think it might have gotten taken down there. Not quite sure either way, as I said. Not much time left. They need to hurry. And there's still going to be the Electro Claw right there. You're not going to be able to open that one up. A grenade comes in to make sure it will be. And that forces us to go for an actual uh, trophy. Trophy, what I'm saying. Motorcycle take here. Here, though, 30 seconds left on the board. The latest push that we've generally seen come through from Dam One Kia. They were pressed and pressured all the way to the end, and now they've got to suddenly make everything connect. The drive down drops an Echo Drone caught by a Flores. Just rotten timing, and that's a bit of a cost, but they still need to find their way through, and Rin is the first off the board. Canos with the spray, and Woogie Man gets a little bit of balance back in. Demic with the back line, who's been a consistent in that intense regard gets one more the spray round drops them they've got to see if they can try and stick it coded well they've got a lot of hope here to make sure aziz doesn't find the shot oh, just have to quick. connect some bullets they get spray. It. it's down one kias the cover just in time there he was about to be able to get the shots down into the hibana that managed to go for the plant at the very last second the cover was there from blue the cover was there from the motorcycle and by wasting or well, giving away his position maybe have wasted the opportunity there but got very close and DK even though it seemed like they might have not been up for the win here today especially not after the five consecutive rounds from Talon that were coming down it seemed like it could have been over for them but they are able to take the win nonetheless it's going to be just two points for them and it's going to be one point for Talon this also puts DK up one step ahead in the potential relegation battle they would be facing. Who would have thought that actually after the major uh, that they would potentially be facing a relegation battle? But besides that, let's toss it over back to the desk.